Hello and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today I'm so excited to have Tina Zion with us. Tina is an intuitive medium, internationally acclaimed instructor and author of three medical intuitive books and two Reiki books. Tina teaches in Europe, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, Canada, and throughout the US. Tina is a faculty member for five holistic organizations and healing retreat centers, including Omega Institute. Tina, it's so great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stefan, for having me. My goodness. Yeah, so uh, we've been working together for a little while, and uh, you're mentoring me on on this uh, medical intuition discipline, which is really amazing. And last year, if you would have tried to convince me that I would be uh, learning medical intuition, I would have said, yeah, no way. That's, uh... Oh, yeah, <laughs> really? Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah. So let's first of all explain to our listener or viewer, what is medical intuition and what is a medical intuitive? Mm, okay. Well, intuition in general is about noticing, really. It's not really a skill. It's simply noticing very, very subtle information uh, of the world around us, from other people, uh, experiences, that kind of thing. Medical intuition, though, is really using that ability uh, to work with ourselves or to be a practitioner for others. And it is simply about in, uh, not just picking up someone's general life story, but it's also receiving information about uh, what is causing their physical illness or their struggles in life, um, negative patterns that keep repeating, things like that. So it's much, much more focused. And then I also teach people about really how to perceive inside of their own body and inside of uh, other people's body to really get even a, a deeper level of information about what is going on, what's the energy doing in that particular organ or that particular joint. So that's really how I would define it. It's very, very detailed, very specific, and uh, very wonderful, I think. I, I love it. Yeah, I love it's, it. it's such an incredible gift. And is this something that you need permission for to scan somebody else, or can you just do you, are you just walking down the street and like you have x-ray vision like Superman and, and you can see that, oh my goodness, that person has a tumor uh, growing in their body or this person is about to have a uh, Widowmaker heart attack. Uh, that's um, something that is, I think, a, a misconception from a lot of people that somebody who has this kind of superpower can just see through you uh, without permission. I'm uh, kind of a maniac about never doing this level of work without permission. Uh, so I, I just pound and pound and pound that in during my courses and workshops because there's nothing more intimate than uh, doing medical intuition for someone else or ourselves. But it, it's also without permission, it's invasive. And I really want to, I guess, uh, really emphasize that it's, it's really not a gift. I'm, I don't have any special gift at all. It's I just spontaneously began to do that while I was giving Reiki sessions oh, back in the early 90s, 1990s. So uh, people, we are very, very powerful and people don't really realize how powerful uh, we humans really are. And we must take great, great care not to abuse our abilities when we realize that we have these abilities. Mm. All right. So what would be an example of having this kind of ability, which, as you said, is something that we all possess. It's not a special, mm -hmm. unique gift that only a few possess. It's all of us. What would be an example of a situation where maybe from your experience your life, of course, keeping things anonymous for the, the client's protection, but also maybe a, uh, a student of yours and an amazing uh, outcome that happened because they were able to spot some sort of issue before it became life-threatening. Mm. Oh, let's see. This, um, I just see who pops in and, and what just popped in 
is a, a woman, and this is very, very telling. When people say that they've gone to every clinic, every specialty area, they've gone to Cleveland Clinic and uh, the Mayo Clinic and all these things, and no one can find anything. So that always is a signal to me that there's something on the uh, energetic level going on. So um, just one example is uh, a woman came in, she'd been to all those clinics, and she said her head keeps, keeps getting pulled over to the right. And so I looked intuitively with her permission because she was actually sitting in my office, and <clears throat> I saw a rope around her neck, an energetic rope around her neck. And so I followed the rope back, and I, there was a man standing at the other end of the rope, and he was not trying to kill her or anything. And I told her that, and I described the man that I perceived, and she said, well, you d just very, very specifically described my husband. And so I just asked my guides, well, uh, what would be the best healing to uh, happen right now for this situation? Because she had spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars trying to come to a, you know, an, understand, an understanding and a healing about this. And so when I asked my guides, they actually said, uh, do not take the rope off of her neck. She must do it for herself, but first she must follow the rope back and talk to her husband right now. So this is all on the energetic level. So, and I said, I will be quiet until you speak. And she was quiet for quite a quite a long time and uh, she finally said okay and I said well what what happened because I didn't interfere I could have looked and watched them and heard them and things like that but it was a very private time for them so I pulled back out of the way and uh, she said we talked it over and he he was just pulling back on me because he he was afraid that I'm getting into this spiritual stuff and he was afraid that he would lose me. And so I said, well, the, the rope is still around your neck. Do you choose to take that off? Do you need that anymore? Does he need it anymore? No. And so she energetically took it off and she's not had any trouble before. And I love, I love that example because it's about uh, relationships too. And it's also about how powerful we are on the energetic level that ends up on the physical level of things mm, amazing and so what happened in the relationship between her and her husband did they have a, a breakthrough and a, oh yeah new evolution yes, yes. of their of, of their relationship yes she went back and talked to him you know on the physical level and told him what happened and and they had a, just a wonderful understanding about it. So it made a big difference in, the, in their relationship. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. So you said a few things I want to circle back on in, okay. in, this, uh, in this story. One was you could have heard them if you had chosen to. So sure. does that mean that you're able to listen to people's thoughts? Or does that mean that you're picking up just on kind of a vibration or you're actually hearing the, the words and the conversation between them. How is that working? Because that, that sounds like a specific different kind of psychic ability and not just medical intuition. Mm. Well, that's a good point. Let's see, how do I want to say this? That telepathy is truly thought leaping back and forth. And we all have the ability to be telepathic. And to me, that's just one of the primary pathways to receive uh, intuitive information because uh, when we talk to our spirit guides, it's telepathic thought jumping back and forth because every single word that we think and then every single sentence that we think is actually an, an electrical charge. It's an electrical spurt that surges through our body, every single word runs through our body in an electronic way. And then it also shoots out into our, um, our aura, our energy field, and then out to the universe. So yes, if, if we tune in, 
we are very, very naturally telepathic because we're just simply receiving um, uh, electrical uh, you know, uh, electrical frequencies of thought is really what it is. Um, now that so that's part of my answer, but the other part of my answer is in this example is we are also very very uh, elastic. We're very stretchy. Our aliveness, our aliveness is not uh, stuck down underneath our skin, and so we can stretch. In fact, that's astral projection. That's remote viewing. Is that we are literally stretching our energy field out. We're not leaving our physical body, or we would die. The body would die, but we are very stretchy. And so I could have stretched back, just like I followed the rope. I just stretched back um, my energy field and followed the rope to who's on the other end of the rope. Um, so I could have remained there and actually uh, at, least, at least heard, you know, bits and pieces of it, if not every word. But again, I really want to emphasize when when people realize how how powerful we are and we have all these abilities very naturally uh, we have these abilities most people just don't notice it but we have to take even greater care not to abuse uh, these abilities mm. yeah, yeah so something that i just intuitively knew from a very young child <laughs> even though i was agnostic uh almost atheistic for my first 42 years I knew not to think hateful thoughts of uh, mm. you know, wishing the worst mm. on somebody. I just knew not to do it. Like, you just don't do that. That wishing somebody was dead or, or wishing they yeah. had a car crash or whatever because they just cut you off the road. I just knew never, ever do that. And um, I'm not sure how mm. I knew that, but my guess is that it was just carried over from you know, past life memories and understandings of, sure. you because know, I, I, in, in the studying that I'm doing uh, this year, I've come to the understanding that if you learn something in this lifetime, you get to carry it over if it's a spiritual lesson or learning. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're learning a skill, let's say how to program on the computer or something like that, that's not something that you carry over into the next lifetime. But these spiritual lessons and learnings are. So any thoughts on that? Yes, yes, because we, we are in a process of development. Uh, and so hopefully, it doesn't always happen, but hopefully we gain in our our awareness with each lifetime and that we do carry that over but what we also carry from the past life uh, is um, trauma uh, tremendous emotion and um, tremendous emotion like fear uh, agony hate uh, that kind of thing or any kind of traumatic moments will tend to carry that into current lives as well, into our current life, because those, those emotions such as uh, guilt, shame, uh, terror, you know, that great fear, it is, has a very dense, very slow, sluggish energy, and it tends to be, um, I guess a good word for it is sticky, and so it does tend to cling and, and get more condensed and we can carry that forward into our current lives. In fact, that's one of the causes of illness mm -hmm. that I've found over and over again. Wow. And another thing that you've found, according to, if, correct me if I'm uh, misstating this, but you've told me that one of the big causes of, of illness is, it relates to an entity or a discarnated soul interfering with us yes. uh, unnaturally just uh, you're walking through the park or something and you get messed with essentially you're not just catching the rays and then one of those uh sunbeams just randomly breaks the the dna in just the wrong place and then your the cancer cells created because it can no longer 
the cell can no longer kill itself and then just keeps replicating. It's not random. It's caused by uh, outside forces that are in intelligent forces. Is that uh, a, a good kind of summary of, of uh, what you were explaining to me earlier? Well, I would want to, for your listeners to really realize that we're not victims, though, to the non-physical world. That, uh, and just like here on Earth, there are bad guys and there are good guys, uh, so to speak. And in the, the spirit realm, in the non-physical realm, there are good guys and bad guys as well. Um, so in an example, if you're walking through the park in your example, and you, um, oh, maybe drink a little bit too much, you might attract someone in spirit who died of alcoholism, but they are still uh, here on earth. They have not crossed over, and they're still, um, most of the time, they don't even know that they are deceased. And so they'll just find somebody of that like vibration and hang around that person, and then uh, the spirit person feels the the uh, what's the the feeling of alcohol, and the living person uh, gets more focused on alcohol because they have an interference of a deceased person hanging around with them. But in the same in the same way, uh, you know, the, the, there's the good guys too in the spirit realm. So m my point of this would be. We are not victims, uh, especially the more aware we get that we are actually spirits right now. Stefan, as you and I sit here, uh, your aliveness is your eternal soul, your, uh, your spirit aliveness, and the same with me. Uh, so, you know, uh, we're not victims of this. We are a spirit in a physical world, but there are spirits in the non-physical world right here right you know standing in an intersection when we drive down the road or you know in the grocery store or, or just whatever because we are non-physical at the exact same time that we're physical and the non-physical world we're part of it right now so i don't want people to ever be afraid of it at all in fact i want people to get more in charge of what they're doing more in charge of their cells. Yeah. That makes me smile even to talk about it. Yeah. Charge, I'm, I'm noticing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one person who comes to mind, really amazing, amazing uh, person who's, who's uh, now back in non physical is Edgar Casey. And he yes. was able to, uh, to channel his higher self. So the part of his soul that was up in the heavens. So we all have uh, this part of our soul that's up in the heavens, our mm -hmm. higher self, our light avatar, this other uh, you know, aspect of, of our soul. And then there's part of our soul that's attached to our physical body through a silver cord. And if you know, something happens to our physical body and, and the body doesn't make it, then that, that silver cord disattaches the soul and, and then we... Yes fully unite with the, the higher self part yes. of our soul that's up in the heavens. Uh, <clears throat> that's my understanding of it. And if mm -hmm. um, you look at Edgar Cayce's work, and that's C-A-Y-C-E, -E, he was able to share such uh, profundities, such um, um, uh, observations and, and wisdom and also prophecies that have been very accurate and instead of channeling uh, someone else he's he was channeling himself but his higher self so that's that's who comes to mind as somebody who is truly very connected to his quote-unquote higher self and uh in in such a way that it really helped many 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 people there's even an organization that's still around uh, that uh, is called the ARE. Uh, it's a nonprofit, and it's all about Edgar Casey's uh, teachings and everything. Yes, yes, yes. 
I would say too, I've, I've been privileged to be with people uh, when they uh, are passing, when they are leaving their physical body. And it is uh, very, it's actually very, very beautiful. And um, maybe not the illness that led them to, you know, they're leaving their physical body, but once that disconnection begins to happen, it is like a blessing. And what I keep seeing, since you brought up the silver cord, is uh, I always see uh, the, the silver cord attached to the base of the spine, of our spinal cord, right at our tailbone. And someone who is ill for a very long time and they're getting closer and closer to leaving their body, uh, actually the this, this skin and the tissue right there uh, at, the, at the tailbone area starts to... Um, Oh, you know, uh, fall apart, the skin gets thin, uh, they call it a bed sore, a uh, decubitus ulcer, uh, that that's the reason is that the energy is beginning to loosen from the spinal cord. Uh, so I, I find that very, very interesting mm -hmm. too. And I've seen it over and over again uh, over the years. Yeah, and and that goes back to your point about the causes mm. of of illness are not mm. purely physical. They have mm. a root that is tied into, let's say, um, yeah. a, a, an emotion or a past life uh, yeah. experience or something that's help happening on the non physical realm such as what you're describing of uh, yeah. the cord, uh, silver cord, uh, slowly kind of mm -hmm. dis disconnecting. Yeah. Now, you, you'd said something earlier, too, that I want to bring up, and that is you were just checking to see who popped in, and so then you talked about that one uh, case example uh, with with the, the woman and, and the rope. How does that work when stuff just pops in? Because I, I know a bit about just mm. intuition generally that it's uh, an in intuitive hit is something that comes in unexpected. It's um, charge neutral. There's no anxiety or excitement or anything. It just simply is. Yeah. And it doesn't lead anywhere from thought to thought to thought to thought to thought. It just stays there. So those are... Uh, kind of the hallmarks of an intuitive hit that's coming from uh, above or from your higher self, your your angels or guides, and yeah. is my understanding of it. And so um, how do you increase that capability to, to have things pop in? So that's part one. How do you get more popping? And secondly, popping. <laughs> how do you, um, how do you, uh, I don't know, follow through on on these things because a lot of people just, um, me included, I used to, just kind of brush it off. I Somebody would pop to my mind and I'd be like, oh yeah, that's somebody I hadn't thought about for a long time. And then it would just, um, I, I wouldn't do anything with it. Now I know, I know better. Mm. But yes, yes. before I, I didn't, I didn't realize what intuition truly was. So if you could cover those two aspects the um uh, popping and yeah and then how how to take action on those pops <laughs> oh okay well <clears throat> i always call it and, and people tell me i should get bumper stickers made that say take the pop because i i always say that because it's the instant piece of information kind of out of nowhere, like if uh, somebody that you know just suddenly pops into your mind, well, what that tells me is you had no thought about that person beforehand, so that person just thought of you. Again, it's that telepathic information, and um, obviously 80% of the human population just blow it off and think, oh, I wonder why I thought about that person, and we don't realize that we are interconnected in all kinds of ways, and especially our communication is very, very um, interconnected. So the reason I say to take the pop of when things just leap in out of, out of nowhere with that feeling of out of nowhere, that 
is a one that's the way to tell that it's not your intellectual mind it's not your logical analytical mind trying to sort things out because what leaps in instantly will always be the clearest piece of uh, in, intuitive information and then a, a couple split seconds after that then our logical brain starts trying to figure it out and sort it out or blow it off uh, as nothing, which is what most people do. And so that's really why I, I really ask people uh, when I teach people how to be uh, more aware of the subtle is always take the pop. And, and the more we notice and distinguish between the pop and then our analytical brain tries to figure it out or blow it off, you know, ignore it or just think it's nothing. Uh, that's the way to to really hear it. And when I decided, oh, years and years ago, to take the pop as an absolute truth, um, my abilities just skyrocketed. Because, see, I, I just, and I started to notice. So really, I tell people all I do is teach people how to notice the very, very subtle. That's really intuition and really the basis of, of what I do hope to get across to people is that that pop of information when i made when i decided oh that is an absolute truth on some level bam it was uh, it just really skyrocketed after that right and this applies not just to things coming in unexpected the intuitive hits that um let's say um i don't uh, uh, somebody that comes to mind and and then i end up calling them and it turns out that it's exactly the right timing and maybe I even saved that person's life or um, yeah. helped them do something really important. The other aspect of this is that you can ask questions of the creator and of your guides yeah. and of the angels yeah. and so forth. And then yeah. the first answer you get, that first immediate answer yeah. is the right answer. And it yes. can defy all logic. It could be something that, how could I possibly know that? And where is that coming from? It just seems completely made up, but it's not. It's coming from above. And and that uh, I, that's proven itself to me time and time again. Good, good. It's really, really uh, beautiful. In fact, what I've come to uh, uh, discover and experience is that I don't even have to finish the sentence. So I'm I'm asking the question in my mind but i'm in to the first second or third word <laughs> and i already hear the, yes, the answer you're right yes 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 uh, that's, yes that's that's kind of a little bit discombobulating at the beginning but it makes total <laughs> sense because in order to formulate the sentence i had to have the question already formulated and uh mm. so that's what's being heard mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. guides ascended masters angels the creator Yes, yes, yes. Well, and the reason, again, to take that pop is that, it, you know, our logical mind didn't, just didn't have time to even um, try to figure it out. And it will always be the most precious, uh, most accurate piece of information. And it will come in spontaneously. It comes in in our, uh, we call it synchronicity but most people call it oh you know whatever and they just discount it like one of my clients last week she was driving her car and she asked uh, her guides for um, a question and she in a pink a big bright she sent me a photo of it a big bright pink truck pulled from another lane in in front of her as she's driving down the road and it had the answer was painted on the side of the truck. And I can't remember what the answer was, but she said that was the answer. And it came to her in a pop. But see, on, also on the physical level of things, it, things will pop in like that. And most people say, oh, that was a coincidence. There are no coincidences. This was meant to be that that bright pink, it was a big panel truck. And I wish I could remember what the words were, but uh, there was there was the answer in the physical level. Yeah. But we, yeah, and we tend not to uh, uh, even give it any credit.
Yeah, yeah, and it's That's something on the physical level too. It's so fun when you get these answers that are in a, a, a song when you just turn on the radio or just something that is yeah. seemingly completely unrelated. But if you think of this life more as a, a movie or a simulation and the director and all the uh, video editors and so forth are working on the movie mm -hmm. at the, uh, you know, as, as it's being played out by you as the star of, of the movie, that makes it a lot easier to kind of, uh, wrap your head around it. Like, Oh, okay. I needed that answer right away. So let's change what is going to be on the radio to be the thing that answers the question. And a great example of this that comes to mind. I interviewed Karen Noe recently. Uh, she's fabulous. What a great, uh, uh soul what a great human what a great soul she's so um uh, amazing anyways she is um of course a psychic medium very very uh, well known one and she s shared a story on on the podcast of a client where the woman had lost her quadruplets she, she lost her quadruplets um uh -huh. and this this was you know in in the course of the pregnancy and not uh, after uh, birth but um, then Karen got a message that two of the uh, that first of all that all four of the souls were doing just fine and no yeah. no no problems over there on the other side and secondly mm -hmm. two of them were coming back and because she saw on the road a license mm -hmm. plate it was a license plate with two quads that was the that was the uh the license plate the number two mm -hmm. and then quads mm -hmm. spelled out yeah. it's like and, the big pink truck yeah yes. and she <laughs> knew instantly like okay two of them are coming back Aww. and sure enough yeah. she had uh twins and and uh at the time karen couldn't have known this just on a physical level she called the, the, the client and told her what happened and that two of them were coming back. And she says, like, yeah, I actually uh, haven't told you this yet, but uh, I'm carrying twins. Yes. There you go. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's so, There's so. No, yes, I love these stories because I hope us sharing these stories with, uh, you know, to your listeners helps, too, to really make it uh, normalize it in, yeah. in many ways. Yeah. yeah. It's not some freak ability it's not no uh, it's nothing to be scared of it's nothing to persecute others for because back no. in the day people would get killed for talking about this stuff yes 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 and in fact that um you know those those past lives that we've had back in the day when there was so much persecution again um many times that past life is one of the, the primary causes of somebody struggling. Uh, and here's my example of that, uh, that persecution that we really don't have anymore, but so many people carry that fear of getting um, more intuitive. In fact, this is one of the blocks that people uh, struggle with the most is they have been persecuted or, or mostly killed in a past life, and that, that terror comes forward with them and and they want so much to be a medical intuitive or or a medium and they can't figure out what's holding them back and i see some crazy horrible past life that's causing that and that again that sticky uh dense energy comes forward with them so i could um let me share a story about that because it's coming in really um kind of wildly that I sat with a woman, just like kind of you and I are doing right now, and energetically, her I was about to start the, uh, the, the session, and energetically, her head rose up like this and just started floating away. And I was more new at this, um, and so I, I wasn't sure what to do, so I, I, I just willed it back and kind of stuck her head back on her physical body. And then it lifted up again and started floating away again. So here's here's something that's very interesting that I find that I say the craziest things to people, kind of like this. And they'll and do you know what? So anyway, I described this to her, and she, do you know what she said? What she said? 
I never feel like my head is attached to my body. And so what I want to uh, hope the listeners hear is that the, the crazy thoughts that they might have has an origin. You know, in this case, she's all, never felt like her head was attached to her body because she brought so much of being beheaded from a past life. I actually saw her a guillotine situation uh, and she brought that terror forward. Well, that gave her all kinds of physical illness here in her neck and throat area was was really a lot of the problems. And so uh, this beautiful healing came forward and happened and it's made a, uh, such a big difference in, in uh, her life and her physical life currently. Oh, that's so for some reason that was coming in through very strongly. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll mention that. But I think it's a good example of even if you have strange feelings or weird feelings, there's there's some truth in there. So notice it on an intuitive, non-physical level. Right. And when yeah. you're doing a healing for somebody, like in that situation, you're helping mm -hmm. her to heal her neck and throat issues yeah. and, and to feel more connected between her heart and her head. Is this something that you kind of just make your hand, hands glow with energy and then just zap <laughs> her or something? Or I, I know the answer to this, of course. <laughs> but uh, Or are you... Uh, somehow keeping yourself out of it to protect you from any kind of taking on negative stuff and and you are calling in the specialists and they're in the energetic specialists. They're doing the heavy lifting for you. And of course, I know what the answer is, but our listener doesn't yet. So, Well, it's actually, I, I would have to say there's multi-level responses um, about that that I can give. Yeah. Is it is it it depends on uh, what the situation is it depends on what is going on with your physical client uh, so all of that depends on a lot of things so if um, if there's if I am told by my divine and sacred guides to uh, back out of there I pull you know because again we're stretchy so I bring myself back through a filter a cleansing filter that is actually provided for me by the divine and sacred guides. And I bring my energy back all cleaned off and just put it back inside of me. And all we do is have to think these things because even um, some of the, the great universities like Princeton and, and Harvard universities are doing all kinds of research about these things. And they're, they're, it's coming out more and more in science all over the place. The energy follows our human thoughts. So we just think it and the energy will happen. So anyway, um, that I'll just bring me back all cleaned off and just put me back into me if that's what I'm directed. But the divine and sacred in this case where the woman's head lifted up and kept floating away kind of makes me chuckle that, um, what happened is I called out and asked, what is uh, uh, the greatest, most profound uh, healing right now for this woman? And in this one example, and this is only one example of what can happen, this beautiful, very feminine hand came, like, came through in the, the air. And, um, and I told the woman what was happening as it was happening, and it was uh, with golden thread stitched her head back onto her body uh, and it, it was just beautiful and that's uh, I have seen that hand more than once with golden thread um, remove things out of people and then stitch them back up so mm. yeah so all kinds of uh, healing can happen but I get goosebumps while that, you're talking about this or angel bumps I can say I get I get uh, angel bumps uh, when you're uh, talking about that situation I healing. love that. I love the angel bumps. I like that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, now let's talk about angel bumps. That there, when that happens for me, as I'm working with somebody, I will stop and tell them, and I and I'll say it's a signal that my guides give me that we're touching in with a really uh, deep level of truth 
yeah. for each other, for the other. It's a validation the from above. Validation, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. So the answer to your question would be, it depends on the individual about what I am told to do, uh, how much I participate, how much I pull out and, and let the divine and sacred participate. Right. So if you participate like uh, a typical, I'm not going to, I'm overgeneralizing here, but let's let's say a, a a new energy worker who comes home exhausted at the end of the day because he or she has taken on some of the energy, some of the uh, emotions, and 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 just the the baggage from the their clients through the day, and the, that can really drain them. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can call in divine and sacred beings who specialize in that particular person and that particular person's yeah. uh, ailment and have them do the heavy lifting. And then you just, uh, you sit or stand behind that filter or that crystal mirror, uh, crystal um, mm -hmm. uh, window or whatever it is that's protecting you, especially if there are dark entities involved and, yeah. um, you know, they're still in the mix and you definitely want to stay clear of them and, and, yes. uh, you know, not accidentally take them home with you. Exactly. Yes. Well, a couple of things, lots and lots of my clients, especially those who do energy work like Reiki, healing touch, quantum touch, um, for, for all kinds of reasons, they are sending their own physical energy into the client when truly and i've had my clients will say oh i've worked on someone and i was terribly sick and i was in bed for three days i've had lots of people say that i don't know the three day thing too repeats and what they've done i'm just watch when they tell me that is that they're giving their essence away when in fact that we will be more profound healers if we step out of the way. And like you said, I really insist on, I only work with the divine and sacred level of healers and intuitives and assistants. Um, because like here on earth, there are different levels of, my dad was a plumber, so there's different levels of plumbing. There's different levels of everything. Nowadays, it's the same in the, spirit realm, I only will work with the divine and sacred. So um, get out of the way. Don't use your own essence. You fill yourself up with Reiki or quantum touch or whatever you're doing, and you send that in. The other thing, I'm running around all over the world trying to tell uh, intuitives and mediums that, that when we do this love of work, we're connecting in with another person. And no one is removing themselves after each session. I think that's what you're thinking about also. Uh, and so I call out for a, a cleansing filter to be provided for me. And then at the end of every session, I bring me and only me back to me clean and clear through that filter provided for me. And I bring I, our, our stretchy energy. I pull it back. All I do is think it and inhale it back in, all cleaned off so it's simply the purest of us. And those two things, don't send your own living essence into people trying to help them. No, you, you become more of a, an open pipeline uh, to do this work and bring yourself back cleaned off after you do a session. So so my answer would be kind of a, a twofold situation. Mm, yeah, that reminds me of back in 2012, I was at a Tony Robbins event in India and I that's where I had my first big spiritual awakening. I was agnostic prior to that. This was October of 2012. I got touched on the head by a monk, a oneness monk, and I had this really trippy experience. It was amazing, beautiful, incredible. It was like an LSD trip where everything was in technicolor afterwards i felt the deepest sense of peace and connection to all that is it was incredible but uh, one thing i learned also that relates to this discussion that we're just having 
is I learned how to give dikshas while I was at that event as well. So the monks taught us how to be a oneness blessing giver. And yeah. the yeah. way that it happens is you uh, stand in front of the person, you put your hands on their head, and you are praying for them, but you're pulling in divine grace from above, and yes. then you're just the conduit for it. It's going right through you, through your hands, into that person. Yes. And the more you pray for that person, the more that you want it for that person, the more divine grace gets pulled from above and through you into that person. And when I did this t uh, two months mm -hmm. later to uh, my now wife, Orion, who uh, you just uh, uh, met through... Uh, having uh, an interview on, on her show, on Stellar Life, which I'll include in the show notes, a link to that wonderful mm. episode. Uh, when I did that to and for her five mm. or 10 minutes after meeting her at uh, a, an event called Date with Destiny, which she happened to be my, my Date with Destiny. It's a personal <laughs> development event, not a dating event, but uh, <laughs> turned out to be uh, yeah. so much more for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew within minutes because I had prayed for her as if she was my soulmate as I'm giving her this deeksha, mm -hmm. this oneness mm -hmm. blessing. So I knew before she did that, ah, she's the one. And so I had gotten a ring and I had proposed to her nine days later. Oh, I t told her I love you 18 hours after meeting her and she said it back oh. to me. It was, uh, like, I was so sure. There was nothing I could, could be more sure about was that she was the one and still is. And it's just amazing that um, these sorts of miraculous moments, uh, you look back on them and say, oh, now that makes sense in so many other ways like how i walked away from a car crash in my early 20s without mm -hmm. a scratch when i likely would have died no that yeah. was angelic intervention that was my guardian angels uh saving me because it wasn't my time yet and it's like looking back on these things like the uh learning how to pass divine grace from above through me when I was such a newbie and not even like a, a week into being uh, spiritual after a lifetime of uh, almost atheism, it was uh, so good to just have that intuitive hit or that just um, kind of otherworldly guidance that, n no, don't give it from your essence. Give it from that is above. one of the most beautiful stories I have ever heard. I love that. That is so special for you to share that. Yeah, I mean, it's it was so right. special to to receive it as a, yeah. an experience of my life, and I'm just always so grateful for it, and and for uh, all the uh, the the after effects, the blessings that came yeah. through that. For example, our our amazing little son, <laughs> uh, who you might hear in the background, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> So this is a pretty good mic, so it does filter it, filter it out. So you know, it's like it's um, it's incredible. All these synchronicities, all these m magic moments that lead to our destiny, and what would have needed to happen for uh, her to show up at that exact moment when there were thousands of exactly. people at the event, and uh, it's just it's just um, it's not about logic. You can't logic yeah. this out. No, but it's all about noticing it on on that you know synchronistic way that it's just us uh, being in the universe and that interconnectedness uh, and these special special moments. Mm -hmm. They're not they're magical, but they're truly the way the universe works. If we get out of our way, mostly we need to get out of the way. Yeah. And again. Um, you said it so beautifully, I really want to say this again, is that intuitives, um, mediums, medical intuitives, that we, we should not give our own essence in a healing. We become the conduit for the divine and sacred is really, and then we should be energized after uh, these moments with other people, these moments of healing too. We should be energized, and if we're not, we got in the way and gave some of our own essence 
away. Yeah, my whole body gets electric. Like the angel yes. bumps are on steroids <laughs> when <laughs> I call in these divine and sacred beings who specialize in uh, this person and 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 th their uh, um, ailment and and their their the healing that's required. Yeah. It's amazing. It's and it's otherworldly. It's beautiful. And then. Uh, you can have a conversation with them. You can ask them uh, to show you things like the point of origin. You know, this is all stuff you taught me. It's all incredible. Show me the point of origin of mm -hmm. this particular issue, uh, yeah. cancer, whatever it was. And then you can yeah. see in your mind's eye, oh, this person was walking in the grass and they were interfered with by some negative entity. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can get that healed mm -hmm. by just asking that being to do it for you and you just yeah. watch, uh, uh, ask them to let you see the healing happen. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I would also add to that too, that negative entities, as we would call them, um, either negative deceased people or negative non-human things, um, they are not more powerful than we are. If they were, if they were so powerful, they wouldn't need to um, glom on to us and and um, you know try to um, take some of our energy. Yeah, That's feed needy. off of us like a Duracell battery. Uh, exactly. Like we're, <laughs> I remember exactly. the well, scene from the Matrix movie where uh, oh, yeah. Neo is being yeah. shown the Duracell battery. Like this is. Yeah. <laughs> This is who we are in this life. <laughs> You're right. Yes, I, I forgot about that. So, but, but I want everybody to hear that the, those what we call negative beings, they are not more powerful than us. They are very, very needy. And if you have the ability to see them, uh, ugly doesn't mean more powerful either. It simply means they're ugly to the human person, but it doesn't mean they're they're more powerful in any way. They're very, very needy. And so I want uh, your listeners to really hear that that we living humans are the powerful beings, not these other uh, more negative things. Yeah. So even if they have reptilian, like, s s slimy mm -hmm. skin, they have uh, sharp teeth, fangs, or whatever sorts of stuff. They look all, all that, scary. Yep. It's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it, it is. Make it a whatever, and you power up, and we are the more powerful, and call in helpers for them. Yeah. Yes. Call in yeah, Ghostbusters. Yep. <laughs> call in the Ghostbusters, yeah. Awesome. Well, I know we're out of time. I had so many more questions, but uh, uh, you know, I'd love to have you back for a follow-up episode at some oh, point if you're game. Great. All right. So sure. we'll we'll do that. But in the Thanks. meantime, this is so much wonderful stuff for our, our listener, our viewer to absorb and apply in their lives and in the lives of others. It's going to be, I think, uh, a break for, a breakthrough for some folks who are uh, you know ready to receive it. So thank you for that. Thank you very, very, very much. All right. And how does our, our listener or viewer get in contact with you? What if they want to learn medical intuition from you or they just want to follow you or um, get a session? How do they how do they do that? Uh, they go to my website. And so I made the, the name of my website very easy. It's tinazion.com. And you'll see um, all like um, the, the books that I have out. Uh, I have a new book coming out October 1 uh, to be a medical intuitive for oneself. The other two books are more to be a practitioner for others. And um, I um, will have my workshops that are coming up on, on the website also. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. I've, I've had a great time with you. Me too. Me too. And and these workshops are uh, virtual, Zoom based, as well yeah. as you have in person uh, workshops yeah. too. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Tina, and thank you, listener. Thank you, we'll catch you on the next episode. This is your host, Stefan Spencer, signing off.